Welcome to the OpenSAP course, an enterprise architect's view on SAP's business technology platform. My name is Holger Seubert and I'm working as a technical architect in SAP's technology and innovation team. So this first week deals with an introduction to enterprise architecture and we start the week by taking a look at the purpose of enterprise architecture. Let's start with a big picture by taking a look at the basic building blocks of every company. So every company has some sort of vision and purpose defining why the company is on the market. And yeah, it is worth mentioning that making money is not a vision, but instead should be a result of the company's vision and purpose. So, for example, SAP's purpose is to help the world run better and improve people's lives. Now, how do you realize the vision? For doing this, every company has a business operating model, defining required roles and responsibilities, and defining how those roles act together to deliver on the purpose. And also, one very basic building block are the so-called business capabilities of every company. What do the business capabilities define? So basically the business capabilities describe what a company is capable of doing. And of course there are business capabilities that you find basically in every company such as human resources or financing and accounting. Um, there are also business capabilities that can be considered to be more industry specific, such as research and development, for example. But now the big question is, how do you bring those business capabilities into action? And this is where the business processes enter the stage. So it is the business processes that define how the business capabilities are actually realized in your company. And this is also the place where some differentiation between two companies can happen. So one company might have other HR related business processes than another company. How do you realize and implement the business processes? This is done with the help of applications and technology. And here you might decide to buy a standard product off the shelf or you decide to develop your own business processes by a custom development project, or as a third option, you'd use a combination of both. You buy a standard product and then adapt and extend it to your individual needs. Now, your company obviously does not live in isolation. So there are constant external factors that might require for a change or at least an adaption of your company's building blocks. So for example, you have constantly new IT trends popping up, machine learning, blockchain, IoT. And what is the technical potential that those IT trends bring along? Do they improve some business processes or can they help you to make your customers even happier than today? Now, um, on the other hand, there are also constantly changing market and economic trends, such as mobility or um, dematerialization being a result of a continuing digitalization. And of course, there are your stakeholders, like customers or employees um, that have a diverse and a changing set of interests and requirements. Now, mapping these external forces to the building blocks, it is fair to say that your company's vision and its business operating model and also its business capabilities can be considered rather stable. There might be market disruptions or mergers and acquisitions that require a change here, but this does typically not happen every year. On the other hand, business processes and also applications and technology being used to realize the business processes typically require a more frequent adaption in the context of the previously mentioned external factors such as changing market conditions or changing stakeholder demands. Now the question is, how does enterprise architecture fit into this picture? 
And the answer is quite easy. It is exactly the practice of enterprise architecture that tries to align the different building blocks of your organization. And one of the very core concepts of enterprise architecture is to look holistically at your company by combining the business side with the technology side. Yeah, it is worth emphasizing that over the past, yeah, let's say two decades, a new capability became more and more important, and this is data. Originally, data was just used for powering stateful transactional applications in the area of logistics or HR, for example. But the importance of data has changed. Data has turned into one of the most valuable assets of your company, and you can suddenly start thinking about scenarios where you can sell data as a product or use data to sell complementary services to your existing um, portfolio. Or you can use data um, to include more data points, optimizing existing business processes along your value chain or support decision taking along your value chain. Again, this capability of dealing with data is also something which is in scope of enterprise architecture. So let's quickly summarize the goals of enterprise architecture. What do you want to achieve by using an enterprise architecture practice? So first, enterprise architecture helps to align IT investments to your company's business goals by taking this holistic view at both business and IT domains. Second, EA helps to manage the complexity of your IT landscape by utilizing synergies and executing on an aligned strategy. Third, EA supports the communication between business and IT by defining a common vocabulary that can be understood by both business and IT. Fourth, EA helps with documenting decisions and landscapes for possible follow-up projects and further reference. And last but not least, EA supports to operationalize innovations and new ideas for improvements by taking your company's IT strategy and the existing investments into account. Okay, so much we talked a little bit about the purpose and the goals of enterprise architecture, but how do you actually do enterprise architecture? Now, first of all, you always create an architecture for some sort of project. You have identified a need of action, a need to improve or change something in your existing business and IT landscape. And now, how do you describe the architecture of that specific project you want to deliver? And basically, you do this by a set of well-defined vocabulary, which you use to describe your project's architecture by taking business and technical aspects into consideration. And what you do is that you typically describe some sort of current state of your architecture, which is the so-called base architecture being relevant for your specific project. And then you also define a future state, the so-called target architecture, that is needed to execute your proposed solution to the business requirements you have discovered. Also, you're doing a gap analysis by comparing the base architecture with the target architecture. And as a result of that gap analysis, you define some action items that need to be delivered. And then you also lay out those action items on a roadmap, defining times, sequences and milestones. Now, um, the vocabulary you use for doing all this comes in different so-called work products that you create when you define your architecture. And these work products basically describe your architecture from different viewpoints. Um, and these viewpoints can be easily understood by business and IT. So that's important. Now, typical categories of work products are diagrams, so visual representations, um, lists, but also catalogs. 
and we will see more concrete examples of those uh, work products in later units. Now, having talked about the goals and how you basically do enterprise architecture, let's wrap up the definition. The architecture you define abstractly describes a construction of a solution, such as an application, for example. And it is worth emphasizing that one system or one application has exactly one architecture. And this architecture can be communicated, presented and displayed in different views. And these views can have different levels of details and different focus areas. You basically choose a view depending on what you want to communicate and who you are talking to. And again, we will discover more examples of those views in later units. Now, creating an enterprise architecture from scratch can be really, really time intensive. And this is the reason why so-called enterprise architecture frameworks were created with the goal to simplify the process of architecture development and guide you through this process. Now, what does an enterprise architecture framework typically deliver? So it typically provides a collection of best practices, some guidelines and also tools and also templates that help you uh, in order to create and develop an architecture. Some examples of enterprise architecture frameworks are the Sachman Enterprise Framework and the Open Group Architecture Framework and also you find some vendor specific frameworks um, in the market. Throughout our course we will build upon the open group architecture framework and therefore let's summarize this unit um, by taking a look at the formal definition of enterprise architecture as it is being done by the open group architecture framework. So what is the purpose of enterprise architecture? With the enterprise architecture, you describe A, the components, B, the interrelationship between the components, and C, the principles and guidelines that are governing the component design and their evolution over time. So thank you for listening. In the next unit, we will hear about a methodology to develop your architecture.